have a DORV subaortic VSD with uh, one additional moderate size muscular VSD with severe pulmonary hypertension and I had uh, undergone underwent the VSD surgical closure of subaortic VSD with PA bending in outside hospital in uh, January 2009 at seven months of age. Uh, but uh, he had significant uh, currently uh, in spite of surgery he has a significant uh, growth failure and there is no weight gain since surgery. The child is currently also on the uh, anti failure medications, uh, lassis, aldactone, and enalaprin, and digoxin. On examination, weight is 5.8 kg. It was 6 kg at the time of the surgery in January 2019. The pulse is 110 per minute, regular, saturating 97%. There is a midline sternotomy scar seen. Apex is in the left fifth interscosis face, just outside the, uh, one centimeter outside the mid clavicular line. S1 is normal, S2 normal split. The red 3 by 6 is early systolic murmur in the left sternal border with the mid diastolic murmur at the apex. X ray is showing situs solitus levocardia with cardiothoracic ratio of around 60%, uh, pulmonary plethora with dilated main pulmonary artery, and uh, the PA band uh, shadow is seen. Uh, there is a pulmonary plethora. Uh, ECG is showing sinus rhythm with rate of around 120 with QRS axis uh, plus 90 with biventricular uh, hypertrophy and the catch vaxel phenomena is seen. On echocardiograph, uh, this is apical four chamber view showing the dilated LALV with moderate TR. Uh, on the right side, the on posterior sweep of the four chamber view, we are able to see the defect uh, VSD. Mm, and the in apical four chamber, it is measuring around 6 mm. This is a subcostal short axis view showing the VSD uh, around uh, measuring around uh, uh, one, uh, 11 mm. And this is a long axis view with the posterior sweep showing the VSD. There is a mild TR with a peak gradient of 57 by 30. The 3D uh, image showing the uh, inlet outlet uh, of RV uh, uh, and the VSD below the tricuspid wall, which was measuring around 10.9 mm. So the final impression is uh, status for the uh, post VSD surgical closure with PA banding in January 2019 for DORV subaortic VSD and additional VSD. Uh, uh, with the 11 mm residual VSD with no significant IV gradient, moderate TR, mild AR with dilated LALV, severe hyperkinetic pH. Uh, actually, b the patient is also having a bilateral SVC with LSVC to the uh, roofed coronary sinus to RA with adequate biventricular function. And the plan is for cardiac catheterization followed by the VSD surgical closure. Thank you. Come to AP view and show fluorum. Huh? Uh, are you are you seeing us uh, uh, yes, yes, right yes. now? Yes, sir. Okay. Now uh, that the uh, the echocardiogram we will show echo live. Echo big. This is this is today's transesophageal echocardiogram just at the beginning of the procedure. You can appreciate here there is a bang at the inlet crux of the heart. You see the mitral valve has sort of disappeared here. And the tricuspid valve is there and the VSD is located right at the corner uh, there, that area. Next picture. Now you see that that is a dilated coronary sinus on the top, which is, uh, which is draining that left superior vena cava. And the VSD is basically at the crux of the heart. Tricuspid valve is seen, mitral valve is partially disappeared. We are seeing the posterior LV wall. Next picture. So next picture, uh, this is the measurement. It measures around 8 millimeter. Next. So the laminar flow from the left atrium, left ventricle to right ventricle. There is no gradient across the ventricular septal defect. Next. Next. Again, another measurement around 8 millimeter. Next. There is a moderate tricuspid regurgitation. Next. You can appreciate now the VSD. This v color suppress, color suppress. Okay, can you can you see that? Can you freeze yeah. it and show us show them? So it is it is it doesn't have a, a proximal margin. Uh, it is located right at the crux of the heart. Color color back. So so that this is the this is the sort of flow from the left ventricle into the right ventricle, quite laminar. Next. So so that is the that is the VSD. Next. So actually for seeing the VSD, I need to push the probe at to the lowermost portion of the heart. This is the uh, long axial view uh, of the left ventricular inflow. No, no regurgitation. 
outflow, no aortic regurgitation. The, the regular VSD patch has no residual VSD. So that is again the VSD. Show the VSD, uh, doctor, uh, doctor uh, uh, take the arrow and show the VSD. Yes, that is the VSD. Next picture. So the, the yeah, that, that is, here we are getting around 9 millimeters, show, show, show back the picture. This is actually in that long axial view, after we see the LV outflow track, then we make a right towards sweep and we get into this. I'll just orient, the below the VSD, show, show that picture back. Okay, below the VSD is the right ventricle, show, show below, 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 uh, that is the right ventricle. Just go above, that is the left ventricle, no, that side, uh, that is the left ventricle. So, uh, basically it is located bang at the crux of the heart. Next. And, and this is the tricuspid regurgitation. This is before any catheters went in. Next. Ch track the ACT and tell us the ACT. So, the RV systolic pressure was around 70. Next. Uh, this is the pulmonary valve. Actually, there was a band that was done by the surgeon in order to restrict the pulmonary blood flow but the band is not uh, functionally active. You can see the quite wide uh, main pulmonary artery uh, with a pulmonary regurgitation due to the uh, PA dilatation. Next, the, the, this is the pulmonary regurgitation jet. We can appreciate that there is quite a severe pulmonary hypertension. So this is the left ventricular outflow track, the aortic valve with the patch seal. There is no aortic regurgitation. The LVOT, there is not much of a gradient, mild flow turbulence. So this is, go back, go back. This is the regular four chamber view where we are not visualizing the VSD. You can appreciate the dilated coronary sinus on the left side. The moment we push it in, then the VSD appears, like after the mitral valve disappears. So it is at the a crux VSD or a bang inlet VSD. Next. So this is that, this is the crux of the heart and there the VSD is there. Next. So then we again made some measurements. Next. So this is what we got as the uh, echocardiographic finding. Now then, uh, Warakan and uh, myself, we, uh, we uh, 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 I think Warakan, you, you want to talk? Well, um, for me, um, you know, because there is no rim at all, um, superiorly, so my, my concern would be if we're gonna put the device in, how can the device will stay? So that's one issue. Second issue would be the heart lock. Uh, because it may close to the AV node, but again, uh, discuss with Shiva. Maybe we can we can, you know, uh, avoid that. So um, uh, to be honest with you, I mean, at home I may ask the surgeon if they can do it, but here because I think the surgeon try as best as possible that they can do it in order to just find this out, but he could not. So I think the, that's the reason why we try to attempt it. Okay, the, the, so what the first, uh, actually it, it's a very questionable, uh, like people might question, it is bang on the crux of the heart, but in my belief, uh, I think the, the AV node will be coming on the anteroseptal commissure. It will be at the anterior end of the septal tricuspid leaflet and not at the posterior end of the septal tricuspid leaflet. This VSD is located at the posterior end of the septal tricuspid leaflet and I feel that this VSD probably may not, if you put in a device, may not cause, even though, during our looping, couple of times we got into heart block, but that was due to the tension of the atrioventricular loop that we created. In fact, we were predictably able to loosen the loop and then get the child back into sinus rhythm. And if we tighten the loop, what size? Same thing, 15 by 12 is there in occlutic. Okay, fine, go ahead. Uh, so sorry about it. Uh, uh, so uh, we we felt that this uh, this area, since it is a post-operative patient, we can give a trial. In fact, the surgeon is so nice that he is coming and standing behind us, the primary surgeon who did the surgery. And uh, so uh, I'll show you the angiography. Show the angiography big. So what we did was we put in a catheter into the right and left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, and into the uh, aorta. Aortic pressure and LV pressure, uh, aortic pressure and pulmonary artery. So we we are the uh, show the angiogram. Cut the echocardiogram and show the angiogram. Take away our faces. Remove us. Okay. So uh, the, the aortic systolic pressure and pulmonary artery systolic pressure were the same. There was no difference between aorta and pulmonary artery pressure. 
the deep into the left pulmonary artery it was 100 systolic aorta was 100 systolic right pulmonary artery was 90 systolic uh, the uh, diastolic pressures in both the pulmonary the pulmonary arteries was about 20 less than the aortic uh, diastolic and the mean pressure was 10 less than the aortic mean uh, then we did the LV, LV angiogram in a hepatoclavicular view which is LAO 40 and uh, cranial 40 uh, we could appreciate freeze the picture we can we can appreciate the freeze okay go back go back go back go back keep on going back up oh, the go back just go back back uh, free fill now from frame by frame this is the this is the that is the jet no just come uh, previous next next uh, okay, that, that broad jet that was coming, immediately it uh, envelops the tricuspid valve. You can see the negative round shadow of the tricuspid valve. You can appreciate here, this is actually inferior part of the tricuspid annulus. It is, it is not uh, at, the, uh, at the superior end. Just can you go back one frame? Yeah, that is the VSD. Can you point it out with a marker here? Is the, do you have any marker there? Okay, so there is no marker, but uh, but uh, can you appreciate uh, a jet that was going from the LV to the RV? Yes, we can. A black yes, color. Okay. Yes, we are so so that was that was the ventricular septal diff. Yeah. So then uh, then uh, the next step that we did next. So uh, run it. Okay. So then we crossed the VSD next. Our uh, yeah run it. Our intention was to. We were thinking, uh, since the patient is having moderate tricuspid regurgitation, which I feel may be due to tri pulmonary hypertension, uh, if we put in a device through the venous side, a cable will be across the tricuspid valve, and there will be tricuspid regurgitation. We will not be knowing whether it is through the cable, because of the cable or otherwise. So we, we transiently thought of retrogradely going and closing it. The issue about a retrograde closure is, we have to put in a large arterial sheath. We measured a maximum of around 9 millimeter on one of the views. So our decision was to go for a 1210, right? Mm. Okay, 1210. Yeah, 1210. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 1210 multifunction occluder, or yeah, 12 millimeter muscular VSD, 10 or 12 millimeter muscular VSD device. Uh, so when, then we decided that since the child is too small, it's only 5.8 kilogram. So we will rather go for a softer device multifunction occluder. <coughs> we advanced uh, it uh, through a six French sheet and we found that six French compatible. Uh, may I interrupt? So the, our then next Hello. intention was, yeah, please. Sir, so, sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, sir, maybe know the hemodynamic data and the uh, parameters for operability. I told you, <coughs> aortic <coughs> pressure and pulmonary artery pressure was systemic. Because but uh, the PA diastolic is 20 less than PA diastolic is 20 mm. less than the aortic diastolic. PA mean is 10 less than the aortic mean. This child is thoroughly having a left right shunt only on echocardiography with saturations always 99%. Uh, child any, is in heart failure. Any comment? LA and LV are dilated. We did not. QP, QS and all I could not take because it's an intubated child on oxygen. Uh, we, cannot, we cannot get any sort of proper oximetry. The child is intubated. I think but considering the age of the child, the yeah. symptoms and the saturation, uh, in most likely the child is still uh, like in QP, the operable QS? range. He's having severe failure to thrive He's as well. He's also all showing the cardiomegaly and the plethora. All signs were in favorable. Okay, we can we can proceed, Doctor Shiva. Parakan, would you like to do yeah, a QPQS? Um, qu qu clinically, the patient is on heart failure, so definitely, if you can get the number, that would be good. But uh, in in terms of the clinical, I think it's justified to do something with that VSD. Intubated patient, so oximetry, I felt, was not going to be giving any reliable data. The PA diastolic and the PA mean was 10 and 20 less than the aortic diastolic and aortic mean. Actually, uh, to uh, comment, so this is Prashant here. Uh, actually, we do all our yes. uh, oximetric data in general analysis here. Uh, 
the reason is usually it's a uh, it's a prolonged procedure and takes almost one and a half to two hours to do all the uh, uh, all the steps. Just if we can get the saturation uh, FiO2 to 21 percent, I think it is uh, it gives a reasonable data. So uh, maybe general anesthesia is not a contraindication to the uh, to uh, to doing an oximetry. Uh, but anyways, I I mean uh, considering all the features, the child looks still operable. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, so what uh, the, the next step is, uh, show the next. So uh, we decided to go and pass a retrograde catheter. However, the problem was we were not able to advance the four French, uh, sorry, six French malin sheath into the uh, VSD. Next. Uh, so next. Uh, so then we decided to take an AV loop. The next. Uh, next, next, next. Yeah, I'll, I'll cut it short. So now, finally, the position right now that we have is show. So there is a there is a AV loop. We have got a, a venous catheter that is going through the RA through the VSD into the left ventricle. We have not removed the loop. The aortic pressure you are watching there. Change it into yellow color. Okay, yellow color so that everybody can see. You cannot change. Okay, it's 105, 104 by 48, 45 with a mean of 66. Work on what you you tell something. What no, no, what do you want fine. to do? I think I follow you, and, and I think that's uh, now we are we are in the right position to do something. Um, the key will be should we uh, just take the the Y out and without uh, you know body Y uh, can we do it? Uh, unfortunately, what we have Get here a is a 7 French uh, Mullins sheath. Uh, so if you're going to use a 10 by 12 uh, MF4, it's likely that it will take 7 French sheath. Flushing. So I think we cannot afford to have the, the body Y, I mean, with the 035 Y. So um, hopefully, once we take the Y out and then when we deploy it, it will be okay. So pray for us. <laughs> can you can you give me a vascular so plug cable? So can you show the device or? What? I'll I'll show it. Can okay. we load it on a vascular plug cable? Yeah, we should. I because think get a vascular plug cable, AVP, thing. AVP cable. Now uh, show the device bigger. So this is Nageshwar Rao device. <laughs> so it has got a high pressure disc that I am holding with this hand. and the low pressure disc that I am holding with this hand. There is a fabric. This is 12, 10. So the discs are 16, 16 millimeter on either side. We do have a concern when we are going from the uh, uh, anti-grade. We will, we will uh, be like sometimes the entire RV disc may be coming on to the right atrial side. Mm. And it will form a button on the septo posterior commissure. Our intention is to push it beneath the tricuspid valve. If you take a rigid PDA cable, what is this? Okay. Now if you take a rigid PDA cable, one of the concern is we might uh, not be able to bend it into the right ventricle. So I am loading it on an AVP2 cable. No, this is not, uh, uh, it's too big. It's too big. Okay, uh, get me uh, another AD AVP2 cable. The screw is uh, going just very big. Okay, this is better. No, but I'm just checking. Okay. So this is coming better. So my, my intention is, after I get it, uh, if suppose this is sitting on the septo -trica, septo posterior tricuspid commissure, I will advance the guide wire towards the right ventricle and try to flip the device into the right ventricle. So uh, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm loading it on a six French sheath. 
i am going to we are going to lose the like you know get out of the av circuit now dr varakan can you get it out i will take the wire out uh which way uh no, this way because this is softer okay okay hmm. bring the wire back yeah uh can you echo big i want is, is it still the temperature issues are there okay so till the time we we take the device inside then you can you can be there one of the problem that we are for the echocardiographer dr raghuram is facing is the temperature of the t probe the pediatric t probe is getting heated up and so it is giving a warning for him Uh, would you can, would you like to shift it into your pigtail here for french yeah that's fine yeah so uh, put in that's a wire and then we can go sir just uh, one question give me question. A, 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 a uh is there yeah. any other option of a device which you would like to consider or five, only the five. double disc device what other like devices you uh, like edio type of device yes edio type of device because it may not have the disc what about uh, what about what about edio type of device edio one type of device well it's it's long neck i mean the shaft is long so i think it it won't accommodate with the short distance of the uh, av valve uh, to the to the hole so i would not use it uh, one more thing is the right now the iota and pa pressures are sort of systemic advance away uh in fact prashant was telling that he would be happy to see a pvri value and all so i think a double disc will make sense rather than a, a single it is definitely not a restrictive vsd it is a, it is a very large vsd maybe there is justification more for a, a, a regular uh, it's about to break uh double disc device rather okay. than a single disc yeah in view of the ph we can consider the double disc device but uh, the entrapment of the tricuspid valve or anything in the disc on the rv side yeah, may yeah. have some of the higher chances what what would what would we think about a yeah, double disc uh, yeah, right, like yeah the point is advo1 will have an advantage that it doesn't protrude through the septo tricuspid septo posterior commissure too much um but in terms of security we will we'll feel very jittery right Yeah and, and also <coughs> and also I think the neck is quite long if you if you touch a tricuspid or anyway so uh, other uh, if we consider Ready. this yeah. is like a hyper kinetic so, uh, pH okay can I have another new one uh, da, da, can I can I have one oh, word what? actually we are trying to get the pigtail into the left ventricle however dr bharat dalvi dr biswajit and uh, dr tin are ready with very very interesting case from the other lab and so they want me to temporarily stop this transmission and uh, switch over to the other lab just a question why not muscular vsd device uh, because uh, it, there is a question we, we thought that that uh, will be taken up I mean seat you can increase the size uh, maybe from you are going from the venous side venous so side. even 8 will go no problem we are considering from the arterial in side. a 5.8 kilo no, no, child no, no, the muscular vsd will be a little bit more side. bulkier Okay so what happened was uh, you 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 show the angiography show uh, a little bit before uh, yeah before okay so this is where we left you so the sheath was in the left ventricle next picture so the run it so this was a a, a 12 ton multifunction occluder device uh which uh, okay next uh okay next okay so the the device was deployed uh, like this uh show the echocardiogram now live so the device is across the concerns now are there is as uh, we were uh, thinking uh, there is there is some tricuspid regurgitation uh, uh, can you get the tricuspid regurgitation better by maybe parasternal long axis or so uh, like uh, you try to see uh, uh, away from the yeah yeah okay that is no no you have inverted the probe your pulmonary artery is on that side what 
what view is this? Uh, see, parasternal short axis. Keep the, yeah, please, please, yeah. Parasternal short axis. Uh, 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 this one, I, I uh, give it to Dr. Amitabha. Parasternal short axis. Yeah, that's pulmonary artery. Yeah, this is the RV disc color now. So that is the tricuspid regurgitation. Maybe over the period of time it may regress because all chambers are dilated and there's a high pressure of the pulmonary artery. We leave him alone, he may regress gradually over a period of time. Who is this so optimistic? Like I like the I I like your comments. <laughs> no, no, it is always there. We have seen two patients with complete hot block. We also got a hot block. Then we thought maybe edema may, may. gave some steroids. Within a week, it completely disappeared, became normal sinus rhythm. And all patients within one is to two months, within six weeks, all chambers. Is it Dr. Kavita Chintala? No, no, I am Dr. Geeta Subramanian, professor of cardiology, Banaras Hindu University. Oh, madam, uh, madam, mm. madam, warm welcome mm -hmm. uh, to the forum. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> madam see? gets the Banaras Hindu University in Varanasi the cardiology program and she was the head of the department of cardiology in Madras Medical College. Madam, thanks a lot for coming to our meeting. We have finished 112 cases and of Dewey's uh, closure. We feel we no, we finished 112 cases in a non-metro city, though it is a big atrocity with limited facilities, without any mortality, morbidity and all are doing very well. Uh, Shiva is still there. And we have to thank Dr. Is actually Vijay. staying in no, no, the... We have to thank Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, Dr. Edwin and our Dr. Avasti. Avasti has become part of our life. Shiva, you are still cable is there, Shiva? Which one? Which one? Cable is there. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, hemodynamics big. Show the hemodynamics big. Maybe I think hemodynamics big. Yes. Now, the question is, if suppose if I release the cable, whether the tricuspid valve uh, entrapment will become better because uh, now the, the cable is uh, maybe splinting some part of the tricuspid valve. Mm. Yeah, why, uh, sir, as we can see, PA pressure has come down. Why not changing Person. over to ADO1 rather than having a doubt of having second disc and uh, whether it will release the entrapment or not? Yeah, but still that the issue concern is uh, like whether I'll be able to predictably go back and uh, again into the LV apex. I'm not sure. We can try to recapture. Huh? I, I think I think we can do recapture, change it, but I'm not sure whether first of all if we can you know do the thing that we did previously or not in terms of the positioning of the uh, the system. I mean the delivery uh, machine. That's one thing. Second thing, I think ADO one is more rigid than this. I'm not sure whether Thanks if it so that rigid, uh, it may cause other problem or not. Third would be, um, you know, peer pressure comes down. Hemodynamics so big. Yeah. If there's TR, uh, I, I don't think TR, that TR gonna create a problem. Um, I can't guarantee definitely that TR will be getting less, but it's less, it's, it's likely to not getting more. So um, so that's all I can do. If, if I were Shiva now, I, I will release it. Shiva, one question, one, I, one I comment is manageable and that's the thing that we cannot avoid with this device but I think that's stable enough to release. Shiva, one comment. I am, s yes, yes Dr. Krishnamurti. Oh, this double disc device I think is more stable because it baffles me even now how this device is sitting there without a superior rim. So a double disc device in such a situation even yes. with a compromise on the trackers wall in course with, with the reference to stability is more stable than Totally agree, sir. I'm surrounded by all intellectuals here. Dr. Tin Goen, <laughs> Dr. Sufafon. What is your opinion, Dr. <laughs> sir, uh, Srinivas here, sir. <laughs> Hello, release. <laughs> sir, have you done yes? it? Yes, Srinivas. LV angiogram, sir, how does it look? About you. I can do it, uh, Srini, but uh, see so the, the... If LV angiogram looks good... Device is possibly secure. Yeah. 
no if there is no residual shell no, but but lv angiogram will not stop uh, lv angiogram will not stop immediately you know this is a this is a very flimsy device it will take uh, some time to close now i uh, i can give some contrast let me see now the only concern we have is the tricuspid regurgitation i think that is a small risk that we have to take Hands and uh, release this device so if not i don't think so any other with method is there to avoid this uncertainty about the tricuspid regurgitation sir also the pa pressures have come down but they have not normalized so we would i think uh, still a double disc device would still be a better than than nadio one here yeah. totally agree sir can you get me some other view so that i can enter a uh, little elevo go to lavo 40 cranial 40 the child is very small so what is happening is whenever we are trying to manipulate the rhythm becomes very uh, uh, abnormal child is about 5.8 kg okay come bus inject give about 8 ml at 12 rate Uh, the the T cable uh, little bit up, yeah. Collimate so that we don't see the mouth, the, the tooth and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can the T probe can little bit come up so that nothing comes in the way. That's it. Okay. Once again. position is okay but in terms of residual flow it will be tough to predict today well what i see in fairly it looks as if the, the device is not sandwiching i mean not stenting the defect properly mm -hmm. so maybe this device is a little bit you know the bicycle like is the same, same diameter right right no. is there an extra device uh, shunt so from the lower side uh, this 1210 pda device because that will be more self centering We'll just try to see re resheath and see whether we are able to get it. Let me see. What do you say? <laughs> Let me listen to the murmur. Yeah. So far, if you Dr. can listen Shiva? to the murmur. Yes, 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 Dr. madam. Dr. Kavita here. Yeah. I'm not as optimistic. I don't know what. Yeah, Dr. Kavita. Uh, I'm not as as optimistic. I don't know what is going to hold without the superior rim. That is one. And the, with the risk of damaging the tricuspid uh -huh. valve and heart block, I would probably send this baby to surgery. Yeah, actually, the see, this is uh, 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 you. You will be knowing that there was one surgery already done. Uh, so uh, actually, if we put in the device and uh, suppose release it, and if the, there is a tricuspid regurgitation, the surgeon can even try to take it tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Uh, true, true, but more than the TR, I think it's kind of entangled in the tricuspid valve and inlet VSDs. We know, you know, don't take very well closeness to the valve. I think we'll try. Uh, we'll try uh, now that you know the PA pressure is coming down. we'll try a uh, advo uh, one and see because that will be self centering dr shiva uh, will you con we continue with the talks yeah yeah please please go ahead what is the problem so we left you after we do we did angio on the left ventricular side So if uh, you can see the the angio now, right? We can yeah. see. Yeah, we can see the angio. Yeah. So couple of things for that angio. Yeah, the first one is uh, what I thought uh, was the for some reason the left ventricular disc is not completely well opposed to the to the septum, and uh, and also another thing that there's a small um, uh, epical muscular VSD, which uh, is show here very nicely. Um, and also, if you can have a look on the echo, uh, echo, echo, please. Raghu is going to show you. Yeah, 
So that one, that was um, uh, when we left you. Again, just showing the TI is quite, quite um, more than moderate, definitely. So we try our best uh, to just manipul maneuvering the cable in order to see whether it will be coaxial of the left or the right ventricle of this to the septum or not, in order to just abolish that TR. So definitely it won't go away. And it's, it, it looks as if it even more, um, you know, in terms of severity. And also we listened to the murmur, and the murmur was more than grade three. So I think um, at that, that time we thought definitely we need to do something, we can't just leave it like that. So we finally decided to recapture it. Please, next please. So we recaptured that, yeah, so we recaptured that device. And you know, Shiva actually uh, very nicely pushed the cable, uh, pushed the, uh, pulled the cable while engaging the, uh, the sheath onto the left ventricle once again. So with that, we didn't lose any uh, you know, position of the, of the sheath. And then we decide whether what should we proceed to the same uh, device or as the previous uh, 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 you know, uh, panelist uh, mentioning about using the um, you know, single disc device, which is uh, ADO type device. So, um, so that, that, that's why we thought probably if we try the same thing, it will come back with the same result. So we decide to use the, uh, the LifeTech PDA device which is actually 10 by 12 millimeters, just similar diameter with the, uh, the device that we use for the MA4. And this is what um, we had um, during uh, deployment of that um, um, PDA device from LiveTech. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, can you run that? Yeah, so, um, so this is much better in terms of the uh, positioning because it's more self-centering. Um, and as you can see that now Shiva did try to pull it back, uh, opposed to the septum, and Echo also showed that it will oppose and then uh, just slightly, uh, Shiva just um, unsheathed. And you can see, appreciate very nicely that the waist is there and also the, uh, the right ventricular side have flare. So it means that for some reason that position is quite stable for this device. Next, please. So then we check, we check angio again. Uh, so it's confirmed that the waist is there and the left ventricular side uh, quite stable. No issue on the left side. And also the TR. Please have a look on the echo. Yeah, so TR severity is definitely less than what we use the MF4. Well, it's there definitely. Uh, it's, it, it didn't go away. A uh, couple of reasons. First, maybe because of the cable. Second, would be because of the uh, you know uh, proximity of the device to the tricuspid valve. But that is what we expected. So the question would be whether we accept that or not. Um, so we discussed quite you know you know comprehensively. So we thought probably uh, because the air pressure is coming down, and even if there's TR, that would not be a problem. Uh, I mean, in terms of the having the right side heart failure whatsoever. So then um, we decide just to release it. So next, please. Next, next, please. Okay, so backward. Okay, so that one is when we did release. So we're quite concerned a bit because um, we thought we thought that the device should be something more. Um, how can I say? Um, um, uh, <laughs> a horizontal, but that one looks a bit more, you know, longitudinal. I mean, tilting quite a bit. But we check also the echo. Please um, show the echo. So that's the last one, right? So again, just to show you that TR is there, but I think it's acceptable, and there's no issue on the tricuspid valve excursion. So valve is moving well. Um, so we check also the RA pressure. It's about the means about 13, right? 13, 14, something like that and peer pressure was a mean is about um, uh, 40 to 50. So we were quite happy with that result. So we finalized, uh, just stopped the procedure. We, 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 won't do, we, we didn't decide to do the apical muscular VSC device closure because I think that is not a big issue at the moment. So that's kind of summarized that we had. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, yeah. I think we'll go with the next session, isn't it? I think uh, we'll Thank go you. with the... Thank, Thank you. you. Thank